And I tell you, I'd let her do with it. She came down and did it. Come on, out with it. And no more of that goofy talk. A two-year-old wouldn't believe that fantastic story you're handing out. How did you know there was going to be a murder five minutes before it happened? Mr. Jordan, Mr. Jordan, are you there? Who are you talking to? What are you mumbling about? We had trouble like this with you once before, Corco. Yes, when you were a fight manager handling that guy Pendleton. Good old Joe. The cleanest fighter that ever lived. Yeah, but when he died... You told us he came down to Earth and got inside other people's bodies. He did, he, he did. And all that hooey about that invisible Mr. Jordan who helped him do it. It's true, I tell you. It's true. True, he did. Mr. Jordan did do it. Mr. Jordan, where are you? Look, Mr. Jordan. Look, are you? What, what? Mr. Jordan, are you there? Hey, Cap, how long do we have to wait around out here? Take it easy, boys. You'll get your story as soon as we break this guy down. Now, get this, Corkle. We don't let anybody make monkeys out of the police force. So unless you want us to really go to work on you... Oh, let me alone, let me alone. I'll tell you everything, but it won't make sense. Come on, come on. Well, this, this fellow, Danny Miller, had a show. It was called Swinging the Muses. It was all about goddesses. He, he made them hot goddesses. And that's where all the trouble began. Somebody didn't like it. And, and uh, they were hoisting a member at the Elton Theater, and she heard about it, and she came down. Mr. Jordan did it. She? Who is she? What are you talking about? That's what I'm trying to tell you. It, it was at a dress rehearsal at the Elton Theater. The Elton Theater. All right, girls. Positions, everybody. Okay, pal, make it good this time. You're not in this show just because you used to carry my books to school. Danny, I'll give you my all. Oh, what's left of it. Careful of those costumes, girls. All set, Phil. Give out with the brass, but don't drown out the lyrics. I want to hear every word. All right, Mr. Miller. Let's go, fellas, and brighten it up. Section 2468B at your public library. Books on Greek mythology are getting, getting dusty on the shelf. It's nigh on 2,000 years since we started our careers. No one digs us, it appears. So we must, we must talk about ourselves. Sure, yep, yep. Well, hello, Jack. What's new outside? I just got back from a chariot ride. I heard I've been elected to tell you what we muses do. The jive is that from way back when our kids could inspire men to sing, to dance, to act, to paint. It's up to us if they is or ain't. For instance, take a chick like me. They call me Terpsichore. I'm the goddess of song and dance. I put the ants in the 
dancers' pants. The nine of us and I'll cover his kids. Three million guys in 2,000 years. Here's an incomplete list of the characters we kiss. Teeny Bellini, Antonio Rossini. Not to mention Mr. Paganini. Delini, McSweeney, and Madame Tetrazzini, and the guy who invented the skinless weenie. We could Schopenhauer, Sigmund Freud, Socrates, and Nietzsche, Thomas Edison, Robert Fulton, Alex Bell, and Donna Michi. Benny Goodman with his knocked out licks. Kiss the kid with the drum in the spirit of 76. Lombardo Brothers, Smith Brothers, Gimble Brothers, Marx Brothers, Crosby Brothers, Dorsey Brothers, Ringling Brothers, Ritz Brothers, Hagen Hagen, Daggett and Ramsell, Park and Tilford, Lee and Ferris, Cross and Blackwell, Liggett and Myers, Sears and Roebuck, Simon and Schuster, Hammock and Schlammer, Brother, there's a half a million others. what's happening on Earth. A mortal, Daniel Miller, is presenting a musical play about us, the Nine Muses. What's disgraceful about that? We've been glorified in song and story for centuries. Shakespeare, Walt Whitman, Robert Burns. But this barbarian isn't Shakespeare, Whitman, or Burns. Why, he's betraying us in a low and vulgar manner on the public stage. <gasps> and according to him, I'm nothing but a man chasing Trump. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, yes. And as for the rest of you, he says you've kissed over three million men. <gasps> Imagine that. How vile. That's scandalous. We haven't kissed a man in over 2,000 years. Except Apollo. Once. And you should hear the type of song he's using. For instance, take a chick like me. They call me Terpsichore. I'm the goddess of song and dance. I put the ants in the dancer's pants. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, yes. That could only come from America. Where else? Why, their number one song on the hit parade is, is who hit Nellie in the belly with a flounder. Oh, who does this savage think inspired Michelangelo? Da Vinci, Rembrandt. Do you know who he's telling the world we inspired? The man who invented the skinless weenie. A Frankfurter. A Frankfurter? How ghastly. Well, you can all stand around and twiddle your thumbs if you want to, but I'm going to do something about it. The theater is my province. It belongs to me. I'll show this Miller imbecile a thing or two. I'll make him regret the day he was born. What can you possibly do? He's down there and you're here. There must be some way. There must be. I know. I know who can do it. He's just the one to help me. Who? He did it before. He can do it again. Terpsichore, what's happening to you? Of course, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. He's the one. Terpsichore, where are you going? Come back here. Terpsichore! We'll, we'll tell you. Lose. Lose. What I want to know is, who do you think you are, popping up out of nowhere, barging into us on one of our busiest days? I told you. I'm Tip Sickery. I've come a long way, and I've got to see him. And I told you he has no time for isolated cases. But I'm not an isolated case. Don't you understand? No. I'm Tip Sickery, the goddess of song and dance. Oh, that's preposterous. She's nothing but a legend. She never existed except in Greek mythology. If you don't take me right to him, you won't exist. I'll... My I'm... dear child, don't threaten. What could you possibly do to me? We don't feel pain up here. Here, here, here. You, come back here. Escort 3082 reporting, sir. Twelve passengers trapped in a blizzard. Teradoy, Southern California. Proceed. Granite, Irwin. Somerset, Nathaniel. He's the multimillionaire, sir. He was the multimillionaire. Oh, I forgot, sir. They can't take it with them. Teradoy, let me go. Oh, Mr. Jordan, could I speak to you? Mr. Jordan, I'm awfully sorry. I did everything in my power to stop her. Why should you try to stop her? Why? Why, you see, she's not like the others. She didn't come up through the regular channels. Indeed. Oh, Mr. Jordan, I see how terribly, terribly busy you are, and I do hope I'm not intruding. That's quite all right. Proceed. Butler, 
Thomas, Donahoe, Eleanor. Supposing you tell me what it is you want. Mr. Jordan, she says she's terpsichore, the Greek goddess. Of course, <laughs> you and I know that's utterly absurd. You and I don't know any such thing. The muses have been the spiritual personification of the arts since the days of ancient Greece. We do only our best, Mr. Jordan. But nobody who is anybody has paid any attention to them for over 2,000 years. Yes. Messenger 7013. We don't have calendars up here. I've tried to explain that to you. It's habit, sir. It's just habit. I keep forgetting. I'm sorry, sir. Well, my dear, how is everything over on Mount Parnassus? Oh, just wonderful, Mr. Jordan. I hated to leave. It was only because I thought it my duty that I was able to tear myself away. You see, I want to go down to Earth and get into a theatrical production. Obviously, you don't know our business here. We bring people up from Earth. We don't take them down. You shut up, you! Oh. Uh, I mean, well, you see, Mr. Jordan, I know you like to help people. And this young man, Mr. Jordan, the producer, is all mixed up. He doesn't understand a goddess. Now, if you would help me, I could play the goddess, then his show would succeed and he'd make a lot of money, you see. Isn't that a good idea, Mr. Jordan? I must say it's extremely kind of you, my dear. But I'm afraid we can't meddle in the financial affairs of every man on Earth. We just don't have the staff for it. There, you see? Oh, but I... Mr. I... Jordan has spoken. But, Mr. Jordan, it seems such a pity. Oh, I'm certain this Mr. Miller is a most deserving person. And I only want to help. Miller, what is his given name? Daniel. Miller, Daniel. Uh, if you'll just wait here a moment. Mr. Stone, contact the registrar's office and ask them for everything they have on Miller, Daniel. It's time, young lady. I hope you'll take my advice for what it's worth. Oh, you make me tired. Oh, oh, oh. I thought you couldn't feel any pain. I've got a memory, haven't I? Mr. Jordan, on Miller Daniel, the official records list him as an alternate. An alternate? Yes, sir. He's due here on one of two separate dates. The first quite soon, the other a number of years hence. The choice depending upon undetermined circumstances. Ah, yes, yes, of course. I remember the whole case now. I believe, Mr. Sloan, that our circumstances have been determined for us. Now, my dear. You say your only interest in this venture is to make Daniel Miller's musical a success. Oh, yes, Mr. Jordan. I have only his welfare at heart. Surely, Mr. Jordan, you're not going to. And you will stay on Earth until your task is completed. But of course. And then return to Mount Parnassus. Oh, yes, Mr. Jordan. Good. I will regard that as an irrevocable promise. You will consider this case your special assignment. Please start immediately. Me? Oh, but, Mr. Jordan, I've been promising myself a vacation for years. Uh, I mean, our kind of years. You will forego your vacation for the present. Take this young lady down at once and assist her in every possible way. Is that perfectly clear? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you, Mr. Jordan. You're a darling. Uh, do you mind if I collect that another day? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Just a moment. I'm the one who says, let's go. Let's go. get around, don't we? One minute we're up there, and then zip, we're here in New York. How do you do it? I'll have to ask you not to pry into trade secrets. Well, another thing, while I'm here, where am I going to live? Take the Peach Bloom Suite at the Waldorf Plaza. I'm sure we can figure some way to take care of the expense. Sounds like fun. Why are they all hurrying so, these Americans? Where are they going? To see Mr. Jordan. <laughs> yes. The more they hurry, the sooner they'll get there. Precisely. I wish you'd wait and not go dashing about. I'm not a racehorse, you know. Do you think you want to be here with me? And why not? Well, I mean those clothes. They might start wondering who I am if I'm seen with you. I have tried to make it clear to you, Miss Terpsichore, that you are the only one who can see and hear Mr. Jordan and me. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Looking for somebody, miss? Oh, 
Oh, yes, yes. A rather silly-looking gentleman. He was wearing a sort of messenger's uniform. He was here a minute ago. And he's here right now. But some people cannot get it into their heads that I can't be seen or heard. <laughs> I don't see nobody, ma'am. Thank you. There. I guess that'll show you, you suspicious little... little... I didn't say it, Mr. Jordan. A real theater. I haven't been on a stage since... 429 B.C. You're not on one yet. Kept Zickory! Yes! No, 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 that's not for you. That's, uh... What is it, Calliope? Come on, kid, give out! An airplane! It crashed on the other side of Parnassus. Any occupants? Men? I'll say two beautiful aviators. I don't care if they're cross-eyed, not kneed bow-legged. All I want to know is, are they alive and healthy? Well, is she supposed to be me? Yeah. Indubitably. Run over your shoulders and bring them in. Very well, it's simply disgraceful. Ambrosia. What I need is a good slug of scotch. Now, well, that's not the way I see Turk Zickory. You had it a minute ago. What's Why, that? it's a thousand times what worse than I ever imagined. God bless you. It's still too tame for my money. Too tame, did he say? Hey, Trollop. He's man crazy. That gentleman must be Mr. Daniel Miller. In the flesh. Temporarily. Well, 7013, this all has to be corrected instantly. You may be satisfied with the way things are going, but I'm not. We're oh, Mr. Jordan. Now perhaps we'll get someplace. What seems to be the trouble? We've got to get that Jezebel out of there and me in. Well, what do you suggest? Why not have her break a leg? You could do that, couldn't you? Well, don't you think that's a bit drastic? Mr. Jordan, how am I going to get into the show? You're the goddess of song and dance, aren't you? Of course I am. Well, what's stopping you? What can I do? Go ahead. You'll think of something. All right, Georgia, let's go through your dance now. Take your places, girls, and brighten it up this time. <laughs> If I may be so bold, sir, I tell you, you're going to rue the day you ever got mixed up with that, that Greek. Here comes the angel. Angel? Mr. Jordan, really? Angel is a theatrical term for one who finances a show. Oh. Oh. Then he's... He's... Joe Mannion, the gambler, yes. Oh, dear, dear. Then he's the one who'll kill Miller if the show fails, won't he? Definitely. For the love of Pete, who's that? Hold it. Time 7013 when our work is quite pleasant. I anticipate nothing but catastrophe. What's going on here? Magic. It's fantastic. That's Terpsichore. What? I need a goddess, and a goddess comes down out of nowhere. I wonder who she is. Well, Mr. Daniel Miller, you've got two of us now. Take your choice. Two of us? Choice? 
Sister, you're about to lose some teeth. Hey, now, take it easy. Why, you cheap, chiseling little hip swinger, I'd like to... How dare you? I ought to have you wiped off the face of the earth. What? Now, girls, wait a minute. You throw this character out of here this very minute or I'm walking. Go ahead and walk. The general tone of the theater will go up about 200%. Well, are you going to throw her out or not? You don't see me doing it, do you? Then I quit. Take it easy, honey. Now, wait a second, Danny. Don't go overboard. You look for months for the right girl. Yeah, and this is just what I was looking for. I've heard enough. He's gone crazy or something. No, no, no. Stick around. But, Danny, can this girl sing? She's got to know how to sing. Let me handle this, will you, Eddie? Honey, please say yes. Can you sing? Of course I can sing. And I can act, too. What is this? A contest? I'm leaving. And if you want to know the truth, I've been looking for an out. Ever since I got into this thing, I knew it was a turkey. Go change your clothes and I'll give you your check. That suits me fine. Honey, I don't know who you are or where you came from, but... Mr. Mannion, is this what the show needed or isn't it? You're rolling the dice. What key do you sing in? Any key. Phil, will you play Let's Stay Young Forever? Coming up. We kiss, be sweet and new, eternally youthful through all the years. Let's be children together, turn the tinsel to gold. Let's always be naive and make believe tomorrow is never. be a song for those in love to sing, but only for the hearts of those who dream of spring. How can our love but stay warm? You can turn a winter storm to Just living for the day from day to day and dreaming that love will always last. Well, that's good enough for me. Where'd you come from? Where have you been hiding? Oh, I just floated down out of the clouds. See, how'd you know this song? I heard it from, uh, from up there. Oh, you've been hanging around the balcony, huh? <laughs> how'd you ever learn to sing and dance the way you do? Well, I sang and danced like that when I was six years old. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, honey? Terpsichore. Uh, I mean, that's the part in the show. Well, yes, I know, but what's your name? Kitty. Hmm, Kitty. That's a pretty name. For a minute there, I thought you were so excited you couldn't remember your own name. Now, uh, if you can calm down a little. I've got a few business details to settle with you. Take over, will you, Eddie? All right, girls, line up. By the way, honey, who's your agent? My what? Agent? You've got an agent, haven't you? Who handles you? <laughs> of course I have an agent. Well, who is he? His name is Max Corfield. He's coming in this very moment. You'll be here in a moment. Oh, Danny, am I lucky to get you when you ain't busy. I want you to meet Rosebud True Love, the human pretzel. She stands on a six-foot ladder, does a full back bend, and laces her shoes with her teeth. Matt, darling! Isn't it funny? We were just talking about him. He's my agent. I'm your agent? Hey, that's what I said. I'm a agent. You'll never guess what's happened, Max. I came out and danced in the chorus just like you told me to, and it worked. Oh, sure, sure, sure. In the, in the chorus, just like I said. Oh, Max, you rascal. You've been wonderful the way you've handled me all these years. Oh, yeah, all these years. Let's see, now, how long has that been? Um... Max, you mean to say you've had a girl like this up your sleeve and never even showed her to me? 
Well, I'll tell you, Danny, it's like this. You see, I got such a big clientele. Mr. Miller, I'm waiting for my check. Excuse me a moment. Say, how many years am I supposed to stand around here? Look, sweetheart, I didn't know that Miss, uh, you, you know, my old client, you'll go back to my office and practice your bends, huh? Same old Max, one of my favorite people. Mine, too. When does he join us? Uh, Mr. Corkle is an agent. That's right. We never get them. You're on your own now, Kitty. I'll be around if you need me. Thanks for everything, Mr. Mr. Kirkland. What are you thanking me for? I ought to be thanking you. Say, uh, why'd you pick me for your agent? A friend recommended you, Max. I'm glad he did. So am I. I'll have the contracts ready in the morning, Max. What's your last name, Kitty? It... Uh, isn't it funny? It's on the tip of my tongue. Well, mine too. Say, what is this? What are you two trying to hide? Is there something in her past? Oh, no, 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 no. But we had an agreement. She didn't want anybody to know who she is. Yes, yes, that's it. Why? It's on account of all those cows. Cows? Yes, yes, my uncle in Texas, he has millions of cows. And <laughs> you know how cows multiply. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't want the family name associated with the theater. And that's it, exactly. Well, if that's all it is, we'll just have to give her a name. I know, we'll call her Pendleton. Kitty Pendleton. You'll be named after the greatest fighter that ever laid on a glove, Joe Pendleton. Came up out of no place just like you and wound up a champ. And you're gonna wind up a champ, right? Right. And it's all set. She gets a regular salary the part calls for. The deal is on. We sign the contracts in the morning. And thanks, Danny. Well, so long, Miss, uh, uh, of course. So long, Miss Pendleton. Be seeing you around. Oh, Eddie, Eddie. Yeah? Say, Eddie, you're about that client of mine. Give her a break, will you? She just got into town. She's never been in the chorus before. Are you kidding? She's not in the chorus. She's playing a lead. The, 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 the lead? Yeah, sure. She's terpsichore. Terpsichore? Yeah. The lead, the lead? Uh -huh. And I've got 10% of her. I never had a lead before. I never had nothing but acrobats, pretzel benders, trained seals. And now I got a star. Me, Max Corkle. I've got a star. Uh, and they're throwing me out of my office. They, they, they're wiping my name off the window. The L and the E are gone. Now it spells cork. I, 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 gotta, I gotta go back. I gotta, I gotta go back. They're throwing the furniture out and I gotta go. Uh, I'm still here. Uh. I suppose you think it was sort of bold of me, pushing my way in as I did. <laughs> I can't say you're a shrinking violet. Anyway, I'm glad you did. I promise you I'll do all in my power to see to it your show is everything it should be. Oh, I'm sure you will. Here, sit down. Well, I, uh, I, uh... Why do you keep staring at me like that? Staring? I wasn't aware of it. Well, you've been looking at me in an awfully strange way ever since I came into the theater. Well, to tell you the truth, I, I do feel something strange about you. Why, it's almost as if you came from another world. Well, you were going to tell me about the show. But yes, I... I guess I'd better give you an idea of the story and uh, let you hear the songs and... Uh, I think that might be a good idea. Well, it, uh, it's about a... Uh... Don't you remember? Oh, yes. Yes, I remember. Uh, you see, Eddie and I play a couple of American aviators and... Uh... Yes. Well, we crash on Mount Parnassus and there we meet the Grecian goddess Terpsichore. You know who she is, don't you? Oh, I think so. She's the most talented of all the goddesses, isn't she? I don't know. I, I never met a goddess. Well, the one in our show is just an ordinary dame. Anyway, this is the love song I sing to you in the first act. You see, I fall in love with you in the show. Uh, the love song. Do you mind? They can't convince me that you're not a dream. No matter how they try, not even when they say, doesn't she walk and talk like ordinary people do? 
I reply, can you deny she's too lovely to be true? They can't convince me that I might be wrong. When I confide that you fell from a star for every time I hold you in my arms I'm more than sure they can't convince me for a dream is what you are You're very kind and I thank you so much. Not at all, not at all. I'm sincere when I, I should buy believe you fell from a star. Well, you know very well, that's absurd. For it seems time to me I hold you're just you pretending a well. more than sure, quite more than sure. They can convince me For a dream is what you Imagining I'm this and imagining I'm that. No more nonsense. Now, I want to know, once and for all, who you really are. All right, all right. If you'll just let me alone, I'll tell you. Now we're getting someplace. I'm Terpsichore, the Grecian goddess of song and dance. Look, I didn't land on my head when I was a kid. Now, come on, honey, who are you? I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's who I am. Oh, you're doing fine, Kitty, but give me a little more on that last line. Hit ridiculous. Yes, Mr. Miller. Okay, I'll give you the cue. Look, I didn't land on my head when I was a kid. Now, come on, honey, who are you? I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's who I am. I'm Terpsichore, the daughter of... of... Well, go on, Kitty. Look, Mr. Miller, it says here Zeus, but it's all wrong. Terpsichore's not the daughter of Zeus. My father... I mean, her father was Dionysus. No, no, Zeus. That's the popular belief, but I happen to know the facts. It's Dionysus. Please, I didn't put this show together with thumbtacks. It so happens I looked up this particular item in the encyclopedia. I hate to disillusion you, but the encyclopedia is wrong. <laughs> no kidding. You know more than the Encyclopedia Britannica. About things like this? Yes. Uh-huh. And now that we're on the subject, you've got a lot of things wrong. For instance? For instance, you've got me drinking ambrosia. Ambrosia's food. Nectar is the drink. And your scenery. Why, it doesn't bear the faintest resemblance to Mount Parnassus. And as for your costume. Look, Kitty, I haven't time to fiddle around. Do you mind? I take you out of the course, give you the lead, and now you're trying to run the whole show. But I tell you, I knew about things like this before your great, 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 great grandfather was born. Boy, you're really a character. Here I am, working late with you, night after night, and all you're doing is giving me trouble. Danny won't go for much of that. No, of course not. I think she must have went to college. You know how that'll ruin anybody. Come on. Mr. Jordan. May I ask the reason for this unseemly haste? I'm sorry, sir, but it's about that Kitty Terpsichore Pendleton, sir. She lied to you brazenly, without shame. Oh. Yes, indeed, sir. She's not helping Danny Miller, that is, Miller Daniel, not in the least. She's trying to change his entire show and fighting with him like a wildcat every inch of the way. I know. You do? Then surely, sir, you'll send her right back where she came from. 
then, of course, you can take your vacation. Well, sir, to be perfectly frank, I did make reservations at Paradise Lake, and you know how difficult they are to get these days. That 7013 was an unwarranted assumption of authority on your part. As soon as you have completed your assignment with this young muse, you will report at my office for disciplinary measures. Mr. Jordan, you're not going to assign me to Brooklyn again. Precisely. Oh, dear. The nights are six months long in Brooklyn. What do morals mean to me? I'm a goddess. I'm... Oh, Danny, I just can't say these lines. Morals do mean something to me. That's I... all very charming, but I'm not interested. Just stick to the script. I can't stand any more of this. The whole idea of this scene is cheap and vulgar. And so is your show. By suggesting that a goddess or anybody else would marry two men. In the name of great Jupiter! If you're going to present the Nine Muses, there must be a way of doing it without such stupid lines, embarrassing costumes, and idiotic sets. Take over, Eddie. Come along with me. Max, it doesn't look good. And I thought I'd given up handling fighters. I could put her in the ring with a tiger. If I could find one that'd take her on. I want to tell you something, Kitty. I've gone overboard for you. Not only in the show, but personally, too. I'm not the kind of a guy to do a lot of talking about those things, but you must know that's how it is. Well, you certainly have a peculiar way of showing it. Well, I'm pushing all my personal feelings aside. I've got to. This show means too much to me. What I've got to come up with is a good, hot, fast-moving musical that'll pack them in. Now, you seem to have different ideas about it. And what I'm trying to tell you is, the way you're doing it, you're going to have a failure, sure. Let me worry about that. Why, you lead people to believe the show's about Terpsichore. But it's not. Why, they'll laugh at you. She's not at all like you've characterized her. Look, I made this whole show up out of thin air. It's all a fairy tale, and Terpsichore's any cockeyed thing I say she is. I'd be careful, Mr. Daniel Miller. She might hear you say that, and she might not like it. Oh, she might not like it, huh? I suppose she might come down out of the clouds and slap me right across the face. She might, if you continue to paint her as a cheap man chasing trollop. Now get this, once and for all. If I say Terpsichore's a trollop, she's a trollop. Be on the stage in five minutes or you're out of the show. Temper, temper, temper. Oh, you. What do you want? A very interesting little scene. Go, go, fry an egg. My, you have come down to earth and right into the gutter. I asked you what you wanted. Don't you have other things to do? Nothing that will give me quite the satisfaction of taking you back. I presume from this display of ladylike restraint that you're amenable to the idea. Well, you're presuming all wrong. I'm not going back at all. I'm going to get what I came down for if, if I have to smash everything in the theater and him with it. The only thing you've smashed so far is yourself. Yes. Yes, I've been obvious. Crude. As a fishwife. What are you up to now? So the gentleman has gone overboard for me, has he? Perhaps I'll swim around with him a little bit. None of that now. You dare to lie to him and lead him on, and I'll, I'll tell him just You what do no such thing. You can't be seen or heard, remember? Oh, dear, dear. That poor young man. So I guess that takes care of you. Honey, Kitty, Danny's talking about throwing you... Who are you talking to? Oh, uh, uh j just the wind. <laughs> it's a silly little habit of mine. Oh, sure, sure. Lots of us got funny habits like that. But don't let anybody catch you, especially as it's just standing still. It ain't even blowing. I'll remember that, Max. Now, about you and Danny. Don't worry about that. I know what I do. That poor young man. I'm sorry, Danny. And Eddie, I've thought it all over, and now I know which one of us is really running the show. All right.
We'll skip the dialogue, go right into the number. Pick it up, will you, Phil? Females. <laughs> One head, but two faces. <laughs> Go to that dame. I think she's weird. Why not? Maybe you've got something that he hasn't got. What? I'd like to tell him, but it's not in the plot. You're strong. You're gentle. He's virile. You're mental. Thank you all. You're a dreamer. He thinks you're handy. He... Okay, sunshine, I know all about that sort of thing. <laughs> this marriage could make me the happiest of creatures. She must be the character that started double features. Hey, students, what about the jurisprudence? You mean the law? Oh, the law, why, that's a bore. There's a law against sitting on the grass, against petting in the park. Laws prohibiting beating wives, thereby inhibiting a million guys' lives. If anything's fun, the law's depressed it. Tell me what you've done and I'll get you arrested. Laws the Congress passes. To me, don't matter a bit. They do not apply to Parnassus or the situation to wit. She's in again with that marriage kick. What's the matter? Don't you want to do it? No, but, but you, you talked talk us into it. Nevertheless, we state just to keep the record straight. This can't be legal. It sounds too good. This can't be legal. We're knocking on wood. I remember Uncle Harry when he tried to marry more than one. Where did he went in? I sent postcards to San Quentin. Up here it's lawful. What's more, it's nice. Bet she keeps a drawer full of old shoes and rice. Let's buy a wedding gown we agree upon. We'll pick it out. I'll put it on. This can't be legal. Get out the M so look up the back of John. Well, what do you think? This must be that new thing everybody's talking about. You know, this might work out all right if you don't hang around too much. Funny, was thinking the same thing about you. Looking after my interest. Yeah, but a pal, always a pal. <laughs> Pardon me while I get the knife out of my back. But I had to put it someplace. It might get rusty. <laughs> Fellas, mm -hmm. second chorus. I'll get two kisses from two pairs of lips. Two little mink coats in case one rips. I will have a man for love and a man to fix the oven too. One with endurance, the other with plenty of life insurance. I'll have two mother-in-laws advising me. I'll lace their gloves on, I'll referee. If it doesn't work out, we can leave her flat. Double alimony, what's wrong with that? This can't be legal. It's murder in the first degree. What do you think now? Oh, this is fine. You with the oven and me with the oven. Now, just a minute. How about you with the oven? No, no, you're the man for the oven. Now, don't move. You're perfect as you are. Oh, you move. Now, wait a minute. Let's get back to that oven routine. Oh, you're in. I hear you make a beautiful upside down cake. Love to, but the blood rushes to my head. <laughs> Well, never mind then. Just some juice and coffee in the morning. Bring it out, and what'll you be doing? Oh, just dusting and brushing things off. Fellas, mm -hmm. break it up. You're on. This can't be legitimate. It must be a trap. Let's try a bit of it. Don't be a sap. We can share and share alike in every little thing the three of us do. That's altruistic, but aren't you too optimistic? I'll stand beside you through storm and strife. For oh, your protection, I'd lay down my life. Suppose I'm insulted by a nasty man. I'll run and get him as fast as I can. This can't be legal. Refer to the case of Jones versus Flegel. At night in my cozy little bed, I lie and dream of both of you sleeping at the Y. What did she say? At night in my cozy little bed, I lie and dream of both of you sleeping at the Y. I want 
going to marry the two of you. Get a load of that dame. I think she's weird. If this is legal, it couldn't happen to four nicer guys. Let's never grow old. Let every kiss we kiss be sweet and new. Let's always be naive and make believe tomorrow is never. There'll always be a song for those in love to sing, but only for the hearts of those who dream of spring. How can our love but stay warm? You can turn a winter storm to Living for the day from day to day and dreaming that love will always love. I hate to disturb you, Danny, but it's confidential. Excuse me, Kitty. It's about Kitty. What about her? She's still working on you to change the show. Now, you keep saying that, but it doesn't make any sense. Why would she want to do that? Because she's the kind of a girl who won't play unless she has all the marbles. Look, Eddie. We've had only one fight in our lives, when we were kids. I don't want to have another one with you. Because you licked me that time. Let's just stay friends, huh? I, uh, I think I'll do a little work. Feeling better, Eddie? Oh, yes, yes, I feel fine. Well, we'll see if we can't do something to change all that. Do you mind? What brought you out here? It worked, didn't it? What worked? Oh, I know what Eddie told you. Oh, you do, huh? Yes. But I'll tell you something that may surprise you. I think he's right. Say, are we talking about the same thing? Of course. I've been willful, selfish, and stubborn. And maybe a little ungrateful. <laughs> You're gonna break down like that? I guess maybe I ought to. I don't mind telling you, I've been kind of bullheaded and stubborn myself. Oh, but you have a right to be. After all, what do I know about the theater? And as you said, I'm just a little nobody you took out of the cars. Oh, I don't know. You, you've had a couple of pretty good ideas. <laughs> now you're just being nice to me. You know, I've been giving a lot of thought to what you've been saying all along. Maybe the public won't like my taste. Maybe I'm just a Broadway mug after all. No. You're an artist. Well, you could be if you reached out. Anyway, I just had a silly idea. They wouldn't like it your way. Maybe you're right. No. Let's not keep talking about the show. Don't you ever think of anything else? Look at that moon. 
It's like a million dollar gold piece. Maybe I'm trying to make the show too low down. What wonderful air. It's like wine. You know, audiences' tastes might have changed. Oh, Danny. He just doesn't like me. No, I... I guess not. Well, I guess I'll go in and let you figure it out. Aren't you going to say goodnight? Goodnight.
you think, Danny? Oh, I don't know. We didn't even get enough applause to take bows. Half a dozen of them walked out during the first act. Well, you can't tell, Danny. They might have been people who had appointments, like, like doctors or something. Thanks, Eddie. My dear, magnificent, magnificent. It's sheer poetry, poetry of movement. Oh, every scene, a painting. My dear, I'm Mrs. Fenimore Hume, president of the Pure Art Forum. I wonder if you would come to a little intimate gathering at my house, a sort of a late supper. I'd be delighted. Danny, do you mind if I go? No, go ahead. Sounds like fun. I'll only be a minute. Brother, if those long hairs go for it, you're dead. Hello, Mr. Mannion. Have a good seat? Yeah. I saw and heard everything. This was just a tryout, Mr. Mannion. Don't judge by this. Remember, our understanding was New York. That's right. Nobody's rushing you. Thanks very much. The manager says they're tearing it to shreds in the lobby. What do we do, post a notice? No, no, I just want a little time to think. Have everybody on stage tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I'm going for a walk. Can I drive you anyplace, Danny? No, thanks. Not tonight. And that guy never looked at a dame before in his life. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Pendleton. Good morning, everybody. What's wrong with you people? Why is everybody so glum? Haven't you read the notices? No. Why? She hasn't read the notices. Swinging the muses, although lovely in spots, resembles a Bach festival and should have been presented at Symphony Hall, where the audience is at least forewarned so that they can sleep through the performance. And listen to this. As for myself, I can take about 20 minutes of Greek classic, but two hours would get anybody down. How dare they? What do they know of the arts? I see it as a great triumph. We've given something beautiful to the theater. Yeah, our blood. But there's a line at the box office all the way down the street. They're the people who bought tickets in advance, asking for their money back. We had a great show. You butted in and made it so darn highbrow. Highbrow? <laughs> I was warned about your country. How can you mix art with jive and baseball and hot dogs? <laughs> Get her. The show busts so she don't live here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hold it. Hold it, everybody. This will get us no place. Now, look, kids. When I got all of you into this thing, I was sure we had every chance for a smash. I knew what I wanted then. And I know what I want now. We're going back to the show exactly as it was before I got sidetracked. We're going to throw all this phony art overboard and stay out of town rehearsing until we've got it whipped into shape. It's going to be everything it started out to be. A show for people who like jive and baseball and hot dogs. And now, one more thing. From now on, there's going to be nobody around here acting like a goddess. I'm the boss. What I say goes. Now, if there's anybody who doesn't like it that way, now's the time for him to say so. That's right. Well? Mr. Miller, the show is all yours. All right, that's that. Before I look anyplace else, I'm going to try every one of you kids for the lead. Hello, Kitty. Oh, Mr. Jordan, you're just the one I want to see. So I imagine. I want to go back, right away. Oh, surely you don't want to leave now, just when he needs you most. I do. I want to leave at once. But you told me you wanted to help him. That was my sole reason for letting you come down. Well, I lied to you, Mr. Jordan. I wasn't interested in him, not for a second. I came down for purely selfish reasons. I wanted to change the show, and that's all I was interested in. I know. And still you let me go ahead? I had a feeling it'd work out all right. But it hasn't. It's worked out all wrong. And I don't intend to tolerate his arrogance any longer. And I don't think you'll go back. Not right now. Mr. Jordan, you underestimate my emotions. I told you I hate the man. I loathe him. I'm not sure of that either. You see, you're not in possession of all the facts. What facts? Well, if you'll allow me, I'd like to take you back in time a few months. There's something quite important that happened then that I think you should know about. What happened? You'll see.
He's on almost every number but the right one. Thirteen will win. Why don't you tell him? Well, this is quite a while ago. I wasn't even here. I'll tell him now. He can't see or hear you. Besides, you haven't met him yet. Oh. Thirteen. Just as you predicted. And I'm not the only one who knew. The wheel is crooked. What is it? What's the matter? They thought Danny came in with some regular patrons, and they extended him credit. He's lost $20,000 and can't pay. Well, I don't understand what any of this has to do with me. Come along. You'll see. Would you like to hear what they're saying? Yes, I would. Why don't you keep on playing when you're right out of money? No, I thought I might win. Well, you didn't. I'd like to talk to you alone, Mr. Mannion. Spike, get going. Just a minute. We're supposed to be partners. I have a half interest in this little palace. I said get going. OK. Let's have it. Well, it's pretty simple. I'm Daniel Miller. I had to get hold of $100,000 right away. What for? To put on a show. I've had a couple of failures, and the boys with the money kind of ran out on me. But I still have plenty of confidence in the show and in myself. If you could come That's through... very touching. But unless I have my 20,000 by tomorrow morning... You'll have one of your gorillas bump me off. You've been seeing too many movies. Oh, I think I know how you operate, Mr. Mannion. I figured all that out before I came up here. Oh, you did? And I also figured out if I didn't win, you'd put up the 100,000 for a piece of the show. Now, where did you ever get an idea like that? Because you're a gambler. You lose 100,000 on the turn of a card. Turning cards is my business. Goodbye, Mr. Miller. Go out that door. Of course, Mr. Mannion, if anything should happen to me now, with all those witnesses out there, you'd be a cinch for the electric chair. Go on. On the other hand, you back the show, and I'll guarantee it with a note. You haven't any money. What good is your note? Oh, this one's very good. It's a suicide note. A uh, suicide note? That's right. If the show fails, you can have one of your boys take care of me. Plant the note in my own handwriting on my body, you're in the clear with the police. Doesn't that appeal to your gambler's instinct? So you want to stake your life against my money? Is that it? That's the idea. At least you know I'll work pretty hard to put the show over. All right. I'll play with those chips. Sit down. And start writing. No one is responsible my death, but myself. I've taken my own life because... And so you see, Kitty, that's the reason I've concerned myself with this young man. I've always felt that he had a great deal to offer, both to life and to the theater. It'd be a pity to take him away too soon. Yes. The choice is up to you, Kitty. With you in the New York opening, it can't fail. But what'll I do? Will he take me back now? I'm quite sure it's worth trying. Good luck, my dear. And do it his way this time. I'm the daughter of Zeus. I'm sorry, honey. It's just too much for you. Anyone else, Eddie? Yes. One more. What do you want? I want to come back. You're too late. Oh, Danny, wait, please. Danny. You walked out, now you can stay out. But you haven't found anyone else. You need me. Like a hole in the head. Oh, Danny, you've got to listen to me. What are you following me for? What are you after now? 
You're still in love with me? I didn't realize what any of this meant to you. But now I do. And all I want to do is help. I'll do anything. Anything you say. It's unimportant what you think of me. Do it for yourself. For the show. Please, Danny. You say you'll do anything I say? Yes, Danny. You'll sing my way? Yes, Danny. Dance my way? Yes, Danny. Wear anything I want you to wear? Yes, Danny. All right. You open in New York Thursday night. They say it received bad notices in Philadelphia. Oh, Jack, I understand. They changed it. I heard good reports. He said it was rumored some sort of trouble with a leading lady. I adore musicals. I'm so tired of thinking. Darling, you've lost weight, haven't you? Or is that a new dress? Good luck, Mr. Miller. Best of luck, boss. Hope you have a smash, Danny. Thanks, girls. Thanks for staying with it. I love all of you. Honey, see you a minute. It's Danny. Hello, Danny. I hope it's wonderful. Well, if you come through like you did in dress rehearsal, we'll have them tossing their wives in the air. I'll do my very best, Danny. I know you will. Curtain! Curtain! Okay. Luck again, honey. <laughs> Good luck, Danny. You too. Gee, I'm scared stiff. Boy, I thought I had butterflies in my stomach before, but now they're wearing roller skates. <laughs> hey, don't bother, Max. She's on soon. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Who is it? It's Max, honey. Uh, come in. This is Mr. Kelly. He's a detective. A detective? You owe $1,800 the Waldorf Plaza Hotel, lady. You had a pretty expensive suite. You skipped to Philadelphia, and we haven't seen a dime. Well, I... I, I Tell him about your uncle in Texas, the rich one with all the cows. Don't give me those cows, lady. None of your stories check. The switchboard operator says you got no phone call. The desk says you got no letters. You've got no boyfriends, and you've got no relatives. There's something phony about you. Come on now. Who are you? Where did you come from? Well, I have to go on in a few minutes. You have a lot to explain, or you'll be on the way to jail in a few minutes. Come on now, out with it. Well, a, a gentleman friend told me to take the peach bloom, sweet. He, he said everything would be taken care of. Who? What's his name? Um, well, he has no name. He, he's a messenger, number 7013. Yeah, what kind of messenger? Western Union? Look, honey, he's got to know the truth. You got to tell us both who you are, or he won't let you go on with the show. All right. All right. I don't know how I can make you believe it, but I'm Terpsichore, the Grecian goddess, and I came down from Mount Parnassus to. to... You know, on opening nights, people get excited and they say a lot of crazy things. But I'm not saying crazy things, Max. It's all true. How could I suddenly come out of no place and pick you for my agent? How could I sing and dance like I do and then nobody ever heard of me? Now, look, sweetheart, I'm just like your father. You've got to get a hold of yourself. I've heard you talking to people when nobody was around. Of course, I understand, but some people don't. I'm one of them. Okay, let's go. Let me alone. I have to go on. Having trouble, Kitty? I certainly am having trouble. Thank goodness you're here. Is there somebody with us? Yes, now everything will be taken care of. What'll I do? What'll I tell them, Mr. Jordan? Mr. Jordan, he's here? You know him? Of course. Holy jumping, and that explains how all these goofy things have been happening. Mr. Jordan is here again. Uh, hello, Mr. Jordan. How are you? Uh, uh, she can see him, but I can't. Oh, I see. Th that explains everything. Well, sure it does. If she's a friend of Mr. Jordan's, then she's a goddess or whatever she says she is. Ain't that right, Mr. Jordan? Hey, what's going on around here? Oh, look, you don't know who Mr. Jordan is. He was a friend of Joe's, that fighter I handled, Joe Pendleton. Well, when Joe died, Mr. Jordan brought him down to Earth and put him inside other people's bodies. I, I heard from Joe last week, Mr. Jordan. He, he's, in, he's in Sacramento. He, he's using my doc's body. He got a couple of kids. He's doing fine. Doing fine? You said he died. He did, and he, he was killed in an airplane crash, and then he was cremated. You're nuttier than a fruitcake, the two of you. What do you think you're pulling? You're coming with me, and you are too. Ask Mr. Kelly if you'll accept payment for the hotel bill. 
Mr. Jordan wants to know if you'll, if you'll accept money. Oh, he does, huh? It's 1,800 bucks. Has Mr. Jordan got in his pocket? Or oh, maybe he ain't got pockets. Well, he only got 90 bucks. Tell Max to answer the telephone. Max, Mr. Jordan says to answer the phone. The phone, it ain't ringing. <laughs> hello? Yeah, this is Corkle. Oh, hello, Sam. It's Sam Hooper, the bookie. How do you know I was here? What, Sam? Pacific Handicap? No, I didn't call you. No, no, I don't want to place a bet, Sam. Wait a minute. Tell him to bet his $90 on Chickie's Choice. Mr. Jordan says to bet your $90 on Chickie's Choice. Hold it. Chickie's Choice? Oh, look, Mr. Jordan, please. Look, Chickie's Choice is a rank outsider. Look, a, 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 a 20 to 1 shot. Look, a dog. Go on, do as he says. All right. Hello, Sam. Um, 90 bucks on the nose, Chickie's Choice. Yeah. Do you want to place a bet, Mr. Kelly? The race will be on a few minutes, California time. I'm not taking tips from a guy that ain't even here. That's it, Sam. My last 90 bucks, Chickie's Choice. Yeah. Well, if we win, there's your 1,800 bucks. Yeah. That's right, Mr. Jordan. Exactly 1,800 bucks. Get hit. Turn on the radio. There they go. It's Donnie Deer going to the front. Jackter is second. Count Saffron is third. Glory Girl fourth. Montague the second is fifth, Pancho sixth, and Waterboy on the outside. Where's and Chickie's choice? Johnny Deer still in front by two lengths. Waterboy on the outside is second by a head. Mr. Jordan, don't, don't, don't you think you ought to have me put it on Donnie Deer? Together, Pancho, Glory Girl, and Montague the second. Into the back stretch. It's Donnie Deer still in the lead by two lengths. Count Saffron is second by one length. Waterboy is third by three quarters of a length. Montague the second fourth. Mr. Jordan, are you Glory sure Chickie's choice is in the race? Jackter is sixth by a length and a half. And Chickie's choice is next and moving up steadily. Chickie's choice is here. He said Chickie's choice. It's Donnie Deer in front by one length. Count Saffron is second by a length and a half. And now Chickie's choice is moving up. Four. Turning for home, it's Come on, sweet Count Saffron is second by a head. Waterboy is third by three quarters of a length. And Chickie's Choice is fourth on the outside. Into the stretch, it's Donnie Deer in front by a length and a half. And coming up fast is Chickie's Choice. Now it's Chickie's Choice challenging Donnie Deer. It's Donnie Deer in front. Chickie's Choice is second. They're head and head. It's Come Donnie on, Deer and Chickie's Come Choice. Come on, please. Donnie Deer Come Choice on, you dog. And Donnie Deer wins by a nose. Uh, I should have known. Mr. Jordan, how could you do this thing to me? No, no, wait. Sorry. My mistake. It's the other way around. The winner is Chickie's Choice. Uh, Mr. Jordan, would you like to go to the races with me Saturday afternoon? For instance, take a chick like me. They call me Tubsicory. <laughs> of song and dance. I put the ass in the dancer's pants. of a goddess. The 
Mr. Mannion, this can't wait.
looks like we're in the money. And if you don't believe it, listen to this. The Scott Harringtons, their Park Avenue and Big, are throwing a big party for the whole troop. So look your prettiest. The, the address is over on the call board, and I'll see you there. You're going with me. I want to show you off. Thanks, Danny. Oh, this is the happiest night of my life. You really killed him, baby. I'm glad, Danny. I'm happy for you. Didn't hurt too much, did it? I had a wonderful time. Kitty, I want to tell you that... It... Come here with me. Kitty, darling, I want to tell you that... That's what I was trying to say. I wanted to hold you like that every time I've been near you. Even when you slapped me in the face. I promise I'll never do it again. I'm sorry, Kitty. I have bad news for you. I'm afraid you'll have to go back. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you. What is it? What's the matter? Oh, nothing, Danny. Nothing. Why are you staring at me like that? Oh, Danny, if anything should happen, if... if we should lose each other, if... Lose each other? No matter how hard it is for you to understand, please believe one thing. I love you now. I'll love you always. Kitty, darling, what is it you're trying to tell me? I can't explain to you, Danny. I have to leave you now. Leave me? Yes, there's something. Someone oh, I... Kitty, what is it? Please trust me. And wait for me. I'll be back. If I can. If I can at all, I'll be at the party. Sweetheart, you were the tops, and oh, what an idea I got. Look, get those other red games to come down here. I'll book you in a personal appearance tour. The nine original muses. Take me out of here, Max. Ain't you gonna change? Ain't you gonna party, honey? Please, Max. Is there anything wrong with you and Danny? Please, just let me think. Sure. You did the only thing you could do, Kitty. No, I shouldn't have done it. I never should have left him. Well, let's tell the driver to turn back. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I don't know, honey. We can't go both ways. I'm sorry, Kitty. We're leaving tonight. Tonight? Oh, but I don't understand. You brought me here and you... No, 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 honey. You brought me, remember? Not you, Max. I, I can't go. Not now. Nothing's settled. And, and Mannion, what'll he do if I step out of the show after one night? Mannion, step out of the show? What are you talking about? I told you, Max, I'm not talking to you. Oh. Oh? You mean, you mean Mr. Jordan is here? Yes, he's sitting right next to you. Oh. Hello, Mr. Jordan. I'm pleased to see you again. Thank you, Max. Kitty, tell the driver to go to Pier 7, East River. We haven't much time. Pier 7, East River. East River? Well, what are we going there for? Mr. Jordan's orders. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, sorry, Mr. Jordan. I, I didn't mean to butt in. Go for the police instantly. Max, Mr. Jordan says you're to go for the police immediately. For oh, the police? Please, Max, hurry. Look. Well, here he comes now.
Mannion? Yes. But who? Why? It was Spike, his partner. He's the sole owner of the gambling establishment now, at least until the police catch up with him. How dreadful. Perhaps. But if the show had failed, he would have murdered Danny Miller one hour ago. So you see, Kitty, that's why it was necessary for you to stay until now. It isn't necessary any longer. But it is. It is because... Because it's different now. You saved Danny's life. That's all we had for you to do. I don't care. I don't care. I love him and I want to stay. It wasn't meant to be, Kitty. Your mission is accomplished and now you must return. That's what we agreed upon. But I don't want it that way anymore. Please, Mr. Jordan. Please. I don't want to be a goddess. I just want to be a human being. I want to get married and, and have a home and be with Danny. Always. Listen. We must go now, my dear. No. I'm not going. I'm not going. Don't fight it, Tupsigary. No. No. I'm getting pendled. <laughs> to take me away, but, but I've come back to you. Oh, Danny, don't be angry with me. Don't you understand? I've come back. I'm never going to leave you again. Ah, uh, champagne. Don't spread this around, girls, but uh, this is the first time Eddie, I've ever it? tasted champagne. What's the matter with Danny? Why doesn't he talk to me? Uh, Eddie! Eddie! It's no use. They can't see or hear you. Please, Mr. George. Please let him hear me. Please let him see me. Just for one moment. It has to be this way. You can't change destiny. for mortals. It's an advantage they have over us. Come, Terpsichore. Yes, Mr. Jordan. What's the matter, kid? You've got a smash hit, and you're moping around like a guy that... It's Kitty's. She's here. No. She was here. But she's gone. What are you talking about? I don't understand. Neither did I. But now I'm beginning to understand many things. Don't look for her, Eddie. You won't find her. But, Danny, this is her coat. She must be here. I tried to tell me right after the show. I tried to tell you what? I don't know. I sometimes wonder if she ever was real. I only know she came out of nowhere and... vanished the same way. But the guy was invisible. How could he tell you there was going to be a murder? Mr. Jordan told her and she told me. Kitty Pendleton was at the scene of the murder and hasn't been seen since. Where is she now? Mr. Jordan took her back. Oh, now I suppose she's living up in the clouds in a civilization that never even existed. That's right. That's just where she is. 
Looks like we'll have to cart this guy off to the nut factory. Wait a minute, I'm innocent. I tell you, I never saw the girl before that first day. She came in and flung her arms around my neck, and she said, Max, darling, just think they took me out of the chorus and gave me the lead. I'm going to play Terpsichore, and I want you to be my agent. Wait! Do you expect us to believe that a dame just bounced in out of no place? Max, darling, just think. They took me out of the chorus and gave me the lead. I'm going to play Terpsichore, and I want you to be my agent. <laughs> I must be leaving you now, Terpsigre. What's going to happen, Mr. Jordan, now that I've lost him? You haven't. Would you like me to show you? I wouldn't do this for anyone else, Terpsichore. But I think you've earned it. Come. Where are we going? Merely a few years into the future. You see, my dear, how simple it is. Here we are, witnessing the future. There I am, still on the job. Look. Danny. But he seems just about the same. The spirit never really ages, my dear. In all these years, He's never had a failure. There's a legend about him on Broadway. They say he was kissed by the muse. Will he look for me? Will he find me? Will he remember me? Well, let's wait and see. Miller. Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. 